Welcoming to another exciting episode of In-Depth Eye Health Podcast Series, brought to you by iFocus and iHub Nigeria Initiative. The series provides incredible insight into topical eye health issues and also serves as a platform for continuous professional development for eye care workers. Thank you as you listen. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ifi Moye. Today, we'll be discussing the World Sight Day 2020, its significance and a reflection on the journey so far to achieving vision for all. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Boma Oboforibo. Our guest for today is Professor Folash Chade Akinshola, consultant ophthalmologist at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital and public health ophthalmology expert in eye care. Thank you for joining us, Ma. Thank you, Dr. Moye. I'm uh, glad to be here with you and I appreciate your having me. Okay, thank you very much, Ma. So Thursday, October 8th is World Sight Day 2020. What is the significance of such a day? Um, thank you. Uh, sight is very important to everybody. And when you talk about sight, all eyes, all ears and are opened and are on ground. So what side day has been in existence for some years now? It is a day that is observed annually on the second Thursday of October every year and is a global event that has been uh, earmarked to draw attention to blindness and visual impairment. It was originally initiated by Sight First Campaign of Lions Club Initiative International. And uh, this has been in existence since the year 2000. It has now become an annual day of awareness creation that is held globally. This is most importantly in terms of advocacy and communications, especially on high health care. And it's been marked as a calendar every year. This year, it is actually uh, given, or what you can call the theme is hope in sight. And we can say that is bringing hope for those who have blindness and visual impairment. And uh, it is quite important because when you have hope, then all is not lost. And that's what the theme this year is all about. Hope in sight. Okay, thank you, Ma. The aim of Vision 2020 is to eliminate avoidable blindness by the year 2020. This is 2020. How close are we to achieving this vision at this time in terms of the causes and management? We will approach it in two parts. We'll talk about the causes. What have we achieved? When we look at the causes of avoidable blindness, which are cataract, glaucoma, refractive errors, especially long and short-sightedness, as well as astigmatism. How far have we gone to deal with the causes? You will agree with me, the two main causes, as it were, are cataract and glaucoma. As long as we have people advancing in age, these two conditions will still remain with us. But with increase in number of experts and awareness creation, especially to those who are what I can call uh, endangered species, then we can say that we are having an improvement. But right now, we are in the year 2020. We still need to do more because we have death of experts and personnel, 
especially in our African region. We also have what I can call inadequate equipment and facilities because by the time we acquire some of our highly prized and expensive equipment, they may not actually be the new ones, but we make do with what we can call fairly or secondhand ones, which are still very good. But we still need to do more to encourage or kind of appeal to those who can support high health care so that we can actually have the best to take care of our patients. I'm going to talk about refractive errors, which affects both adults and children. And for adults, they can talk. But for children, you have to observe them and see how they're faring at school or even at play. And so you may need to do more in that area, especially the school training, so that we can um, see and treat those children that may otherwise not have been detected. Okay, thank you very much, Ma. Now, in view of what is going on now with the COVID-19 pandemic, we know that it has significantly affected various sectors of healthcare. What have been the implications for eye care in Nigeria and what lessons can we learn from it? Um, before I come down on Nigeria, if you remember, the whistleblower in China was an ophthalmologist who uh, sadly eventually passed on. So you can see that we are very vulnerable because the modes or the routes of transmission have been uh, stated to be one, through the nose, through the mouth, and through the eyes, especially the tears. And so for us as ophthalmologists, it has changed our way, or what I can call the methods by which we now attend to patients. When the wave first came to Nigeria, we had to suspend all old and follow up. And then we now devise ways to treat the emergency because you cannot leave the emergencies. Otherwise, then we are increasing the number of what we can call avoidable blindness and visual impairment. So uh, the country, at least, on the platform of the Ophthalmological Society, we decided that we will have to take all necessary precautions. That is, we will not be too close to patients, but at, at the same time, we will examine them to the best of our abilities. And different teaching hospitals started having devices like the screen on the, the screen on the uh, slit arm, as well as having double face mask and eye shield. So we devise all necessary means to avoid being infected. And so going forward now, it has helped us to know that we can actually still practice ophthalmology as long as we take all necessary precautions and we are doing very well. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So, Ma, moving forward, what is your advice to the general public on maintaining good eye health and how can the challenges be identified and managed? Uh, there are simple steps. We can call it the ABC. One, do not put anything that is not advised by doctors in your eyes. Waking up in the morning, use clean water to clean your eyes. Avoid using your fingers to touch your eyes because that's one of actually uh, lessons we learned from the COVID pandemic. Because your fingers touch different things and by the time you now put it in your eyes, you are introducing infection. As well as making sure that you know your high healthcare personnel. And these ones are from the cheerleader or who I can call the commander in chief or of eye care. That's the ophthalmologist, the ophthalmic nurse, the optometrist, the optician, and other supporting staff. Once you know them, 
you will know where to go when you have eye infections. Now, I will digress to talk about government. We will talk about patients, we talk about the specialists, I will not talk about the government, then we have not done very well for ourselves. But I can now commend and say, with the desk officer at the Federal Ministry of Health, we have started seeing some improvement in high health care in Nigeria. And going forward, we will all have to put hands together, work with our work with Ophthalmological Society of Nigeria, and then we'll see a better tomorrow for eye care in our nation. Thank you very much, Mr. for your expert insight on this topic for World Side Day 2020. It's been a real pleasure having you with us. My pleasure.